Hello and welcome to another edition of the Eternal Journey and that resolves and today we're running out of ideas. So uh, we're getting to that point of the format now where we're like two months in, two and a half months in and I'm not too sure what we should play that's sort of like new and exciting so I did take a look at Ray Ray's um, combo deck like Storm deck with Tamaris. I'm not a brain scientist genius, I'm not going to play that yet. I'll do some reading, probably pick it up like in a week or two uh, if it's still good then. But watching that deck in action. I've not read the article yet. I think I will do that uh, probably over this weekend, actually. It fired out a couple of ideas in my head that I thought were pretty good for brewing with. So the first one is that Second Sight with Cho is uh, pretty nice, actually. And also, Caldon Cradle costs free now, which is actually a pretty huge change. So, with Cradle, this now costs free. I think that is... Obviously, it's just better, but it's also it's going to be easier for you to hold like your seek powers and your cargos in your hand until after you've played Cradle now, because you, you don't need to struggle to hit uh, Freak, whereas you would struggle maybe to hit four like quite consistently. Well, four and have the Cradle. Um, so I think what's worth trying. Uh, we've got a lot of spells in here. We've actually got more spells than it looks like because we've got Highland Peak, which is like three spells a piece. I've got Cho, which is going to add us treasure troves, and then the combo with. Uh, Second sight is it we're just going to draw more. Um, so one interesting thing with this deck is that we've ended up having to play uh, perhaps the worst merchant that we could play in this faction pairing, and that is Ixta Merchant. So we're playing Ixta Merchant because, like, the, I think the tier list for this deck would probably be like um, Smuggler, then Genev, and then Ixta. Ixta just like a pre to overwhelm, and it's a little bit less um, so utility, but it gives us access to Bar and Cauldron Cookbook. And because it's a merchant rather than a smuggler, it means we're able to put like a Caldean Cradle and a Howling Peak in the market and not have to worry too much. And I've also got like a Rizan. Rizan's not dead. Rizan is still good. Uh, I don't really want it in the main deck, but I would like to be able to grab it. And I should imagine it should be reasonably easy for us to get six spells in the void because we're just like mono spells dot deck, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Also, you know, when you've got like Howling Peaks, like this one's probably fine because we'll just like play it, kill something, Howling Peak it, make another one. And it's not like Gohan. Um, generally, in the matchups where we want Rizan, one's enough. Like the second one is just really going to just shut the door. But the first one is usually like gain eight or like kill something, gain three. You know, they have to discard a card to kill it. Um, but yeah, general idea is we're going to just play a bunch of spells, try and make Dragons or Caldon Cradle. If that's not working, we've got Second Sight, which is pretty good with our expensive dragons. They're expensive, uh, triple fire, triple primal, which is a bit of a problem, I'll uh, shift to stone. This deck's mostly fine just at drawing one card a turn, but when we put into the mix that we're actually going to be drawing more, because uh, we've got like second sight strategize, we've got the treasure troves, and seek piles and cargoes, I don't imagine this would be a problem to actually play on time. But saying that, we are only playing one Thunder Strike Dragon, it's just to complement the second sight. We've also got Jordan Earl, which is basically for the same reason. Uh, Jordan Earl's plot is going to be like, it's either an overcosted 4-4 four four, or it's going to kill Nori Ronin and then the other half is just going to get shipped off to the market with the Ixta Merchant. Although actually, as we're playing Ixta Merchant, it's kind of nice because we are able to sort of like do the dance with Cho, like use a treasure trove, draw a card or whatever, put Cho back in the market. Later on, like maybe with Mirror Image Merchant or we we'll draw another one, we we'll get Cho back out, get another treasure trove and just keep like sort of like cycling through these spells which is going to really tick up our Caldon Cradles nice and quickly. So I've probably waffled on for about four years now. So let's, uh, let's jump into the games. Probably going to do free for this one, uh, just because I want to get the video out quickly. And then it'll give me some time to have a look at the ETS and all that sort of things and see what other decks that we do actually want to be playing. I am thinking of doing that Elysian Nightmare deck, I don't think I've covered it yet. Whenever I've tried playing it, it's just never worked for me. And then whenever I've played against it, because I've known what it's all about, it's usually not worked for my opponent either. So I think I'm going to try it, just because I've not covered it, but... I don't hold up uh, much hopes for the results of that deck. Okay, so here we are for game one. Uh, this is a redraw. I got a nice little sweepers, but hmm. okay, so actually, I think I want to keep this. Um, we are probably going to end up playing the seat power on two just to get a primal to be able to play the Caldaren. But if we draw like any primal source, I'm sort of happy just to play Cradle and then play seat power after. Because I think that's one of the good things about it now costing free is that you don't have to like spew off all of your spells really early on. And we are playing two cargoes as well because you can cargo into a spell, which is sort of nice. So 
it's not impossible, but good luck. Play cargo. Well, it's, it's smoke contraband, isn't it? At that time, play the contraband. There we go. So perfect. This lines up perfectly for us. And I've got Mike playing like the Elysian um, Nightmare deck, which could be a problem because uh, we're probably not going to be able to. Okay, cool. We're doing well. Uh, probably fine. I'm not going to play any spells here. I'm just going to save them just so we can get the cradle going. Okay, so, opponent's playing a uh, reanimation strategy. Uh, so we have got like millions of uh, wipes, so we can potentially do okay. Because Vara is very powerful now, but uh, you can run them out because of the the void nonsense. Yeah, let's just torch this, so we're just not letting our opponent keep this um, enabler in play. So, let's play Cradle. Leave our opponent to it, and um, they're at least like two turns away from Maybe we should have played some sort of like um, permission, but they've not got something to play if they uh, bring back the uh, the Azendoth straight away. Uh, with this, I suppose we fire up the fire sauce. Right. It's because of the tech, yeah. So we've only got one. So actually, it tells us how many we've got now, which is good. Uh, there was a point in time where Caldera and Creel didn't tell you how many, which was uh, sort of a nuisance. Um, I don't think we need like millions of end of the story. And I should probably have my deck list somewhere so I can actually see how many of what we've got. Actually, I do have got a shift stone. Cool. So, the first requirements we've got like uh, double twos, wisdom, yeah, so I'll get two of everything first. Yeah, then we can start working on our freeze. So we're XXX, YYY, ZZ. Hmm. Got some shadows, fine. I promise. Got an Azendel. Uh, does this work up nicely for us? I think it does. Okay, cool. We've got an end story on top as well. Uh, it's just partial here. We do only trade one for one there, but um, we've traded Harshul for Aggressment Shadows against the reanimation deck, so it's probably fine. When they get up to Varus, that's probably going to be a bit more of a problem, but fine then. Hopefully, we could just keep uh, let them void bound all the stuff and then just like end of the story here. Oh dear, so they've got another one. Well that is the second grasping and they're only at six, so we won't be able to get it back with Vara, so that's sort of fine really. Um, so this will get us a dragon. So let's beep that. Let's crest it up now. Uh, more merchants, probably fine. Uh, what can we get in here that might be good? Um, so do we want the long game with... Um, <sighs> so, whoa, this one's got lifesteal. <laughs> nice. That's, uh, that's something you see every day. Uh, could go and get Cradle just so we can start making multiples. Because I probably, with what they're up to, probably can't deal with multiple of them. Um, but do we just want to. We want to keep our end of the stories, I think. Yeah, let's just get Cradle. It's slow. Taking rid of the getting rid of the second site might be a mistake there, but uh, this just stops anything too nonsense from happening. Um, if I point was like the third grasping, <laughs> then that's uh, this is going to suck to be us. But we were able to part up under under an amount of clock here. Well, look at the drawing from the deck here. Um, some sort of like discard out there, mask. Yes, so they two it before they milled, which is probably. Correct. <laughs> that, that can't be nice. Uh, let's just cradle. I've not really many reasons to start not attack with both here. It's fine to get two things. So I've got less things in play for if they do any sort of like nonsense with Azendel. So they're drawing one card, so I'm like fine, because we'll just wipe the board if and that sort of feels fine in comparison to uh, what could happen. So if our opponent just makes a mask here, which is probably fine. Um, I don't really want to go and get bar to be honest. Actually, kind of want to get uh, Howling Peaks now. So we're we at for spells. We're at zero on both. Uh, so this will tick us both up, and Howling Peak will do a little bit of something. So let's kind of 
What are after realistically? Maybe we should have got uh, peaks early before this cradle because it would have done a lot more than this cradle did. Uh, but yeah, just playing this, shooting this. Gift's fine. Okay, well, <laughs> we get to have it all. Not quite in the way that I wanted it to, but it'll do. So we'll murmurage this. We do have to trade away our end just to get this bar. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's not be gifted. <laughs> that sounds sort of awful. Um, yeah, I suppose we'll keep it like this. So we can lose our peaks uh, just because. Well, if there's a removal spell, the blast hammer kills it. That's not ideal. Okay, so grasping at shadows for Azindal. Okay, quite gets to draw like Akkad. Uh, which is probably fine. And then we'll probably just um, attack all. I uh, hope I won't drive him too good. Ugh. Echo spell. Okay, so they got chill. Probably fine. Well, we got chill too, so taste it. Um, Do we just gun down? Probably not. Let's uh, just kill favour. And then our cradles are on free, so uh, we can. Make sure we sequence this properly. Uh, it's not point, is there? Opponent just like they can they can see it coming. They just a uh, chump, don't they? So let us end the story. Kill all this, and then play treasure trove, and hopefully make some dragons. Uh, you know, some big boys as well. So got that going for us. So opponent just gets to play a chill, which is sort of tedious. Uh, but we get to like gun down it, and then if we draw like a torch or something, we'll be able to deal with it. But other than that, we get to make the free attack for 10. Because I'll probably have the 6-6 six, six with like one point of damage on it. And if we draw actually, if we draw a snowball, we'll be able to deal with it as well. So We've, lot, we've got a lot going well for us right now. We're in trouble, because this kind of merchant could be what's fetching our opponent's um, Vara. Or their final grasp. Oh, not the. Uh, I don't know what they did there, but <laughs> works for me. Okay, well, um, oh, one part hand, no thanks. Uh, oh boy. Well, if you want to see this uh, not safe work, our last opponent just added us. Uh, cool. <laughs> well, let's snip that. We'll get some uh, value off enjoying that. Uh, probably going to keep this hand, actually, but I'm going to enjoy the fact that our opponent is uh, last opponent's a bit of a muppet. So, yeah, we'll keep that. So our current opponent seems like a fine, upstanding citizen though, because they're playing at least Argentpot, or well, probably FGS or something. Uh, we'll just... No reason not to play this quest of one here. Yep, I do like power. It is a primal source, which isn't something we actually need right now. Uh, but we've got a strategy, so we can deal with it. But it lets us be able to get rid of it. Let's go for free. So I'll just... Well, one of them, I guess. So, would ideally like to well find a cradle actually. So, cradle or merchant, we've got like a bunch of outs of what we'd like to see. Uh, it's a bit of a problem because our opponent is gonna. Whew, there we go. Well, we are a ways away from being able to get anywhere with this cradle because we're not getting any spells that actually uh, do much of anything. Charles Far Point getting to do all these treasure troves. Oh yes, we get to do it too. Uh, well, I don't think I want like an additional end of the story, so we'll bottom that. Mm, I don't want the power either, <laughs> but um, yeah, I guess the uh, X Power's sort of fine because we do have like the, the chill here that we're eventually use something like. Whoa. 
I'm gonna start dancing with chill now, that's uh, not the best for us. But we'll just torch this, get rid of it. Bar? What's our point? Just hate fun. Everyone just hates fun, don't they? Oh, that's, uh, that's a big crest, I suppose. Uh, yep, yeah, don't need more crests. It is a additional fire source, but I think we're like, what? 10 power or something like that? That's not into it. I'd rather just find like, some card draw. We'll get to this eventually, anyway. <laughs> Got you. So we add down a dragon and, like, get out of here. As much as I would like the extra uh, fire source, uh, we're at 8 power. Don't want to be at 9 or 10. Just not where I want to be. Hmm. Well, also, we're just like at a million power anyway. Uh, I can't play chill now, which is a bit of a problem. Oh, I'm actually quite cross because uh, that's the first salt I'd have had in a long time. Okay, well. You cannot hide. We'll play Cho, so we do. So when Cho attacks, Cho makes a bunch of treasure troves. Uh, treasure troves make prizes because they turn into dragons. Slowly, admittedly, <laughs> but um, you know it's it's a synergy within the deck. There's some power in it, so we just double touching because I'm not fine with that. Yeah, sort of okay with this. Six five is fine, but it's not much in the way of reach anymore. Um, these sort of decks, no, they don't play Rizan. Well, I'm gonna seek power first. I'm just uh, I should probably keep it a nine while we're up to. Up to three. So let's put that one back. And then we're on here. We're on three. So. I think we'll treasure troll and then we'll crest. And this time's the time where we can actually get away with it. More power. It's like infinite powers. Uh, harsh rule at this point. We kind of don't want harsh rule because <laughs> we've just got millions of them. I'd rather just like have like more card draw just to be able to get some fast speed dragons. Because, well, when you're able to make like this uh, five five dragon, maybe point to turn or like in combat, like next turn when our opponent attacks, if we just like wisdom, like this, then it just feel pretty good. Uh, yeah, extra merchants good. It. Gets us an additional copy of Cradle, and now we know our opponent's bar's gone. Like, feeling good, I'll be honest with you. And then we get to use Wisdom of the Elders to kill this, so it might feel like you're down a card, but um, your Wisdom it was a removal spell, so. Cool, and finally, we've got an extra merchant, so we get to do something with all this power. So, probably the first one will get Howling Peaks, which will then. Mirror image our Ixlum merchant. Ah, uh, okay, so this is interesting. So we probably want to kill this because it's going to be a problem for us. Um, is there a way we can do this where we get, get to do some cool stuff? And I don't think there is. So because our opponent should be playing uh, Roland's Memorial, I want to get the Hallow Peak first rather than the Caldarian Cradle. So that's just a. Uh, so six nine. Should we, could we play it? Five three as eight, and then plus three as eleven. But then we don't have the. We need. So let's play this one. Play more expensive. What's fine. Or the least expensive one. Play a mistake, but end of the story. We can probably do something like that. Let's get this. We'll get a howling peak. Then if our opponent doesn't kill this. Um, we get to mirror midget and then trade this power into something, which is where we actually want to be. So, I chose sort of like messed up our plans a little bit because it made that our turn wasn't quite as fluid because I did want to just like play this sort of stuff going on. Yeah, John 2 units is fine. It's not ideal because now our opponent gets to draw. I said, just chore the ops to get to draw? Okay, they got a smuggler as well, cool. But they shouldn't have more like relic removal, so. Fine, actually. So, where are we on this? We're one. Which isn't millions, I'll be honest. So, let's play with this one. Go for the image. Uh, 
grab this and then at this point we could get cookbook, that'd be pretty good. But I think we're just gonna go for cradle. Could also get Rizan. Hmm. So what spells do we have left? Gun down as well. Um, actually I kinda like cookbook. That's kinda good. Cookbook, of course, uh, famously has synergy with. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's got synergy with a uh, cradle here, because if you draw a firebomb, it's a spell. Which admittedly is not best, but uh, I'll take it. Okay, so. Yeah, no drawing that, we could just like go ham with uh, Yeah, but on that. It must just be like so much power about our deck. So if our opponent's got like a, a finger majigger, uh, deep forge plate, it's a bit of a problem because our opponent gets like deal a million to us, but. If they're just going to go and get maxed away, that's fine. So. We're at two. Do need to keep an eye on that because I don't want to line up the making a dragon with the end of the story because, yeah, not about that. So, are we just allowing this? And, yeah, I don't want that to lose my sight, so maybe keep that. We'll just like end of the story this time, but that's fine. What's this all about? So, uh, I will just do a lot forever. I, mean, I suppose you have to make the attack, but it's just uh, it's a little suspicious. Then I suppose we'll just like kill this. And I could actually just gun down this. Yeah, I think that's probably better, isn't it? I don't have like actual because we double block, we dealt with the thing that mattered. Yeah, I like that. Uh, we'll just gun down this and <laughs> snowball it just for like, BM value. Beep. Beep and fire right up nose. Then we're at four on this, so we can actually get an instant speed one, which is good. Uh, I do we just don't don't draw a five bomb because that's uh, not quite where we want to be. I think I'd like the utility, but not playing like Wisdom of the Elders and, and Torch, so I probably won't play the four four. Uh, actually, yeah, I will. Unlike Looney's play both, isn't it? So I may as well play it just have like a fretting play, and then we can actually turn this board into quite a, a fretting one because we get to make the five five. If my opponent does have like something that does deal with this, uh, we do get to. Uh, Mark's chains is fine. Do they have a power as well? We do. Okay, well, kill the 4 6, that's fine. So, our opponent's got uh, a bit of a problem on for us. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, 5 bombs not quite well right. I hope didn't really want to go to 10 there, but. I suppose that's uh, our life now. Right, just kill Phil of our opponent. So. Well, we've got no charge in our deck, have we? So, may as well just like crack our opponent for eight. That's fine. Where are we at with this? We're at two spells. Okay. So, let's crack our opponent for five. Which is kind of good. Um, yeah. Get out of here, the story. Just be like, oh, would you like to play this? Uh, not remotely. Cool, so Joan Hill <laughs> gets to. Oh, yes, Thunder Strike Dragon. Oh, what do you want more? A Thunder Strike Dragon? Or a Cho? Uh, Cho's basically another Thunder Strike Dragon anyway, because it gets us the thing. Yeah, I'll support Thunder Strikes on top. That seems cool. Uh, we're just like so rich, it's just unbelievable. Um. What about this? Free. So let's snowball our opponent. And then we'll just play Fun Strike Dragon. Seems fine. This leaves us the option. I don't want to draw more. I'm not. Don't want to draw more. I don't want to put more fire bombs in my deck right now because we are only at ten. Uh, but what I do want to do is just like present lethal because our opponent gets to kill like one of our things. Probably the five eight. That's fine. So we'll torch our opponent. Put them to nine. Have two five halves in play. That seems good. Oh, I was going to cut ties off. Thing <laughs> ruins all of our plans. Oh, hopefully we can still stop like uh, do some work because we're going to kill Diesels now. Opponent could potentially display an ambition to kill less, which is not ideal, really. Yeah, uh, the other two modes in this aren't really too threatening, and we've got like. 
infinite threats now. <laughs> So I've almost like a really big version of this deck now. Um, sure. I think it's a little bit risky to shuffle our um, hand into our deck and then um, and then draw like what would have been like eight cards or something when we do have two fire bombs in our deck so probably not going to activate uh, Caleb so that's why we didn't activate just gets a little bit risky because now at the point where I'm pretty sure we can just win um, but I don't want to get any sort of weird things happening where you know we just kill ourselves with fire bombs that's uh, it's not a one lose game okay no that was fine it's not ideal because I promise getting to the point where they can just make these and we are going to have to give them the draw free, I think. Because uh, we can't really go to free against like the torch deck that's potentially got like a Rizan hanging around. Um, we'll do it to Crest first. Okay, extend merchants. Good. Because that'll be able to get some things and stuff. So let's look here. Going in, it's good. Hmm. It'll get the job done, guaranteed. Get rid of actually, uh, cancel that. Get rid of the end of the story because we've got like two removal spells there. Uh, I will get, I'll oh, just like put so much in play that they have to answer it all. Oh, got plenty of threats. Let's just bar. What's that pulls up to? Pulls up to one spell. Hmm. You can't leave our opponent with that in play. It's just going to do too much damage. Uh, play for Nostrack Dragon. Two threats in play. Uh, potentially quite lethal for our opponent. Well, it's only eight, but nine, but. So drawing two units. Okay, so. Potentially risky for our opponent because we just like. If they play Vara plus other thing, we'll just like let them have it and then just deal eight to them because we've got ways of getting through. Actually we don't because of the two two. We'll have lifesteal on it. Hmm. Difficult game. Hmm. Well, Diesel's uh, office actually quite impressed me over the time. Well, Contraband gets to do something here. Uh, let's play, I guess. Eight, nine, and nine. Yeah, so, uh, sacrifice the units to deal free damage to an enemy. <laughs> uh, Cloud Snake Carry, your spells deal plus one damage. So that's risky <laughs> with five bombs, but two fire bombs is lethal anyway, so, like, whatever. Um, what sacrifice the units to deal free damage to an enemy? So, we could deal six to our opponent. Isn't quite getting there. We'll get Cloud Snake just because it's like a threat. Um, yeah, it's cookbook. Oh, cool. So, we get to vanquish this. What's our market? It's good. We'll get Rizan now. Cool. Swap this. Uh, I suppose we'll just mirror image our thing because then we can get Rizan. This get Rizan gets us to gain some life and we'll potentially kill this site next turn. Because I've got stuff having life still is not what it's about. Maybe we should have just attacked our opponent there. Pump to four, because we are gonna kill this and then attack them, but well, it's the mistake we've made. You know, we'll learn together. Uh, some of these short streams it's just part of them fun. To be honest, and just relaxing. But I am still hmm. I've been thrown off by that <laughs> comic from my opponent, the last one. Not too happy about that, I'll be honest. Usually I get like quite nice ads after games, which is people, you know, saying, oh, it's a cool deck and all that stuff. <sighs> so they're making Cho here. That 
playing it though. It's interesting. I can't see why not though. Um, try and fight dead, <laughs> I suppose. So let's start by vanquish this. Uh, we should have attacked that opponent last turn, shouldn't we? So that's what it's uh, coming down to. We're going to go to 13, so we're quite safe in terms of fire bombs now. Attack our opponent. If they have like the one torch, or. Oh, we got away with it, cool. So we made a mistake in like the second to last turn of the game, but I think we got away with it. But I suppose making it so that if our opponent managed to deal with everything we had, still heavily out of being able to kill the the site with Rizan to stop our opponent's lifesteal, with so, such a low life total, it was probably worth it to be honest. Yep, on to the last game for the video then. Oh cool, so I've seen this player's name before. Uh, let's redraw this. I just put one power hands, no thanks. Uh, this looks good. So we can have naturally fine power, because uh, we've got crests, or uh, we can play a seek power, it's not too bad. But we've got like a bunch of spells to go with our stuff. I'll play the Skycrow Crest, ooh, Howling Peak, there we go. I'll play the Skycrow Crest just because I think it's like less threatening, realistically. Uh, Crest of Glory, phew, much scarier. Crest of Glory means your opponent's probably playing FGS and they're up to something that's just going to destroy it. Oh, Xenon, that's fine. Uh, might be a rat deck because that's the sort of thing I want to play against. Uh, let's crest. See, you want to play power. I'm happy. Uh, let's see, Bass will do. That's quite injustice, I suppose. Then it just lets me just slam Cradle. If we are playing against a deck that just like mains banish, then just like yikes. So opponent just like unironically went for like a primal source there. So unless I've just got like not got much in the way of um, requirements. This could also be playing like cargoes. Was, oh they're actually playing primal. Let's just think about what our opponents just like trying to make us consider what deck they might be. But no, generally just a usable deck here. So cool. Um probably gonna stretch highs and put end of the story. Actually, no, it's probably fine, isn't it? Let's see, grab Primal. And then I think I'm just gonna torch this. Get rid of it. Makes it so our opponent doesn't like just on top of stuff. And there were two already, and then we get to the second site. Not sure what we're gonna do, because. <laughs> uh, I could have perhaps played Strategize, but. Hmm. But we're a little ways away from being able to do anything this Howling Peak. That's just second sight. The stuff we don't like, we can get rid of it with the strat anyway. So, put us on top, I guess. Oh, what a surprise. We do that. Um, let's strategize actually to try and draw a power now. Okay, more cradles are good. Uh, torch, probably less good. So our opponent could have got um, Passage of Aliens. If our opponent's got Passage of Aliens, we're just going to concede the game and move on to um, the deck tech, because, yeah. Well, I am a person of my word, so I'm going to go to the deck tech. <laughs> but this deck was sweet. I'm probably going to revisit it. But yeah, I'm not... I'm not uh, <laughs> I ain't got, like, infinite time today, unfortunately. So trying to win the game like the old-fashioned way is probably going to be a difficulty. Okay, so there we have it. <laughs> this deck's cool. It reminds me of the uh, Knucklebones deck we played like maybe six months ago or something. And this is something I'd like to sort of play with again. Uh, unfortunately, I was a little bit short on time tonight. I only really had like 45 minutes and we're up to 40 uh, before editing. So um, this, I might make another video of this in like the next couple of days just because I think there's something there that we can play with and just make a little bit better. Probably up power to like 28, 29, rather than just having like all these cargoes. They are good uh, because they play well with Caldo and Cradle, uh, but I think maybe we just want to have like the natural amount to be higher. Uh, but other than that, it's kind of cool. I do like these like low unit counts, sort of like build around a thing decks. 
something that I do like. But other than that, thanks for watching. I'm mean, that resolves, and I'll see you around. Also, last thing, um, just don't add your opponent to be like a dipstick to him. You literally get no value off it. I don't think it makes you feel better, and it definitely doesn't make your opponent feel better. This is best of one ladder. Like, if you're having a bad time, just go and take a break. Like, go on the Reddit, go on the Discord. Just like, if you need someone to talk to, just go and find them. Like, go find me if you want to. If you're having a real bad time, I'm on Twitter, I'm on the Reddit, I'm on the Discord. If you're on a rough time, just go and find me. Don't send people unsolicited, like, mean spirited messages for no reason because it's not going to improve your life. But, I'll see you later.